Imagine a world where economic development is no longer confined to a few countries. What if it was a shared phenomenon, a global wave of prosperity? Is that possible? In the grand scheme of global trade, historically, the reins have been held by a select few nations. These countries often found in the West have dominated the economic landscape, their growth and prosperity hinging on a complex web of international exchange. But what if we could shift the paradigm? What if economic development wasn't a privilege enjoyed by a select few, but a shared phenomenon, rippling out across the globe in an all-encompassing wave of prosperity? To explore this, we need to delve into the intricate workings of global trade patterns. These patterns, like footprints in the sand, offer us a roadmap to understanding how wealth and prosperity can be distributed more evenly. Understanding global trade patterns can help us see the possibilities. Let's dive into one such pattern, the flying geese paradigm. The flying geese paradigm, a theory that transformed the economic landscape of East Asia, is a fascinating study of economic development. At its core, this paradigm is a model of industrial development, where nations follow each other in a V formation like a flock of flying geese. But instead of birds, we're talking about countries, and instead of flight, we're talking about economic progress. In simple terms, the lead goose in this formation is the most industrialized country, setting the pace and direction for the others. This leader, often a country with advanced technology and robust infrastructure, begins by manufacturing and exporting high-tech, capital-intensive goods. Over time, as the leader moves on to more sophisticated sectors, the industries it leaves behind are taken up by the following geese, the less developed nations. This cyclical pattern of industrial upgrading and passing down of industries is the crux of the flying geese paradigm. It's a continuous, dynamic process, a domino effect of sorts where industrialization spreads from one nation to another in a sequential and orderly manner. Now let's turn our gaze to East Asia, the region where this theory has truly taken flight. Here, Japan was the lead goose, followed by the so-called four Asian tigers, South Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Singapore. As Japan advanced, it passed on industries to these nations, which in turn passed them on to the next set of followers, such as Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia. This domino effect resulted in a massive economic transformation across East Asia. It fueled rapid industrialization, created jobs, and lifted millions out of poverty. The region, once primarily agricultural, became a global hub for manufacturing and technology. In essence, the flying geese paradigm has been a powerful force in East Asia's economic metamorphosis. It's a testament to how strategic development and international cooperation can propel economies forward, turning fledgling nations into global powerhouses. This pattern of development has had a profound impact on East Asia, but what does this mean for the rest of the world? Stay with us as we explore the global implications of this fascinating economic phenomenon. While East Asia has been flying high, the rest of the world has been reshaping its trade patterns through reshoring, nearshoring, and friendshoring. But what do these terms mean and how are they changing the face of global trade? Let's dive in. Reshoring is the process of bringing back production and manufacturing to one's home country. This is often done to reduce costs, improve quality, and boost domestic economy. It's like a boomerang effect in the business world. Companies send manufacturing processes overseas only to bring them back home after recognizing the benefits of local production. For instance, a clothing brand may have initially moved its production to a country with cheaper labor. But after grappling with quality issues and long lead times, it decides to bring production back home. This is reshoring in action. And it's gaining momentum. Nearshoring, on the other hand, is the practice of transferring business operations to nearby countries. The goal here is to capitalize on geographical proximity, cultural similarities, and time zone alignment. Think of it as moving your backyard garden to your front yard. It's still within your property but closer to where you can keep a better eye on it. For example, an American tech company might move its customer service operations from Asia to Mexico. The company still enjoys cost benefits but now, it also has the advantage of similar time zones and easier communication. And then, there's friends whoring. This term refers to the practice of shifting business processes to countries with which one shares friendly relations, strategic alliances, or trade agreements. It's like choosing to play in your friend's backyard because you trust them and know the rules of their turf. For instance, a European car manufacturer might move its production to a country within the European Union, leveraging existing trade agreements and shared regulations. So why are these trends gaining traction? It's a mix of reasons, really. 
rising labor costs in traditionally low-cost countries, quality control issues, and the desire for shorter supply chains are some of the key factors. Not to mention, the increasing importance of sustainability and ethical practices in business operations. Furthermore, technological advancements are making it easier than ever to automate processes, reducing the need for cheap labor. And let's not forget the impact of recent global events like trade wars and pandemics that have highlighted the vulnerabilities of extended supply chains and the benefits of having production closer to home. These new trends are transforming the way the world trades. But how might these changes affect Africa? The continent is ripe with potential, but will it be able to capitalize on these shifts in global trade dynamics? Or will it be left behind in the race? These new trends are transforming the way the world trades, but how might these changes affect Africa? Africa, a continent rich with resources and potential, stands on the cusp of a new era. Could the flying geese paradigm and the reshaping of global trade spark an African economic boom? As we delve into the possibilities, let's first consider the flying geese paradigm. This model, which played a significant role in East Asia's economic ascendance, could potentially be Africa's ticket to economic growth. As industries mature and become less competitive in developed countries, they could migrate to African countries, just as they did to East Asia. This could foster industrialization and technological advancement, driving economic growth across the continent. But wait, there's more. The restructuring of global trade through reshoring, nearshoring, and friendshoring could also have profound implications for Africa. As Western firms seek to reduce costs and enhance supply chain resilience, Africa, with its abundant labor force and strategic location, could emerge as a compelling destination for investment and manufacturing. However, it's not all smooth sailing. Africa faces a myriad of challenges that could hamper its economic development. Infrastructure deficits, political instability, and the lack of skilled labor are just a few. Addressing these issues will be crucial to unlocking the continent's full potential. Yet, despite these challenges, Africa's future looks promising. With the right policies and investments, the continent could harness the power of the flying geese paradigm and the shifting dynamics of global trade to fuel its economic development. Imagine a future where African countries are not just exporters of raw materials, but also major players in global manufacturing and technology sectors. So, is Africa the next frontier? Only time will tell. But one thing is certain. Africa's journey towards economic prosperity is not a question of if, but when. The continent has all the ingredients for success. It's now up to its leaders to stir the pot and serve up a dish that the world won't forget. As the world continues to evolve, so will its economic patterns. Africa might just be the next big player on the global stage. The future of global trade is not set in stone. It's a constantly evolving landscape shaped by trends like the flying geese paradigm and reshoring. As we stand on the brink of a new era, it's fascinating to imagine the potential transformations that await us. Imagine a world where each country, regardless of its size or economic standing, has the potential to rise. A world where the economic development is shared more equitably, not just among the developed countries, but also the developing ones. This may seem like a distant dream, but with the current trends in global trade, it's a future that's within our grasp. Consider the flying geese paradigm, which has already shown us how economic development can ripple outwards from a single source. It's a model that has proven its worth in East Asia, where countries like South Korea, Taiwan, and China have soared to new economic heights. This paradigm could potentially be replicated in other parts of the world like Africa, where countries are ready and eager to take flight. Then there's reshoring, nearshoring, and friendshoring trends that are reshaping the global trade landscape. More and more companies are moving their operations closer to home, driven by a desire for increased control, reduced costs, and the ability to respond swiftly to market changes. This shift could lead to more balanced trade relationships and a more equitable distribution of economic development. But it's not just about the economic benefits. These changes could also lead to more sustainable and responsible practices in global trade. As companies move their operations closer to home, they'll have greater oversight over their supply chains, which could lead to improved labor conditions, better environmental practices, and a more ethical approach to trade. The future of global trade is a world of possibilities, a world where every country, regardless of its size or economic standing, has the potential to rise. As we move forward, remember this. The world of trade is vast and ever-changing. 
and in this world every country has the potential to fly high. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.